Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. I have been playing around with a nifty little idea recently. I've seen people use rotary missile racks before, something like Ruger's little smart bomb launcher that I used on my Varmus. I decided to try to apply this concept to the new cannons. I've come up with some interesting results. This is my rotary hex barrel 150mm shotgun. It has four firing pins, each pointing in a different direction, and rather than a turret, I am using a spin block. The spin block, controlled by this ACB here, is set to rotate at a speed of one, and I've discovered that any higher than this gives the turrets tracking problems, and they have trouble actually firing at their target, so one is sort of the maximum. Now with this speed, the turret spins at approximately one rotation every 8 seconds and allows us an interesting opportunity to fire four shell salvos with an 8 second reload, without a huge mass of autoloaders and coolers, or worrying about the autoloader complexity scaling. Now, this cannon carousel is the 4th or 5th generation of builds, and I think I've landed on a relatively practical variant of this idea. Now, I have an unarmoured one over here so that you can see what goes into the cannons. Now, as you can see, there really isn't a lot to each individual cannon. There's no coolers at all, um, it's just 8 gauge upgrades, and this gives us the maximum gauge. After that, there's 6 regular autoloaders, one for each barrel, with a single clip attached. Each clip has an input feeder connected, uh, as do the autoloaders on the other side here, uh, to offset the slightly slower shell to ammo clip time. Now normally it's better to only attach input feeders to your clips as attaching to an autoloader directly incurs a 50% reload penalty. But in this case the 50% is enough anyway so it lets us save a little bit of space instead rather than placing them on the outside here. These cannons are not placed symmetrically as you'll see in this unarmoured design over here. But this allows us to tessellate them effectively around the central pillar. There's just one like little pillar of beams there with the ammo router in the middle and an AI on the top. Now also you have to place this local weapon controller attached to each firing piece to get it to fire. Um, you're not able to connect it to the spin block as you would with a turret. Uh, in this case I've used one local weapon controller for all four firing pins. Now there's nothing to stop you using multiple LWCs if your firing pins are in different places. So if you don't want to orientate them or like configure your barrels in exactly the same place, you maybe want to offset them to the side or something like that, you might have to use an, uh, a weapon controller for each one, which is totally feasible as long as you have space for it. The barrels are 8 meters long, including the bore excavator, which is a bit overkill for most of the shells I've tried in this gun, and you can trim that back where required. Now with this configuration of loaders and a speed setting of 1 on the spin block, it allows each cannon to fire once per rotation. The ACB at the bottom here is just to get the spin block rotating at the desired speed. Now if you were to build this into a single firing piece cannon, the amount of loaders required would be much more than tw the 24 that I've used here. You could save a lot on the cost of gauges and barrels, but the actual size and complexity of the cannon would be significantly bigger, or require the use of at least belt feeders, uh, which does give you the trade-off of having a downtime. Now I have tried a number of shells in this. Starting with the inertial high explosive shell that Ruger uses in this 250mm mortar, which is a gunpowder, an inertial fuse, and two high explosive bodies. I needed to keep the reload, including the complexity scaling, low enough to get one salvo off per rotation. So at this gauge, I'm limited to about two block shells. This is still enough to get a bit of versatility out of the shells. These particular high explosive shells are great at taking out shielded targets. They aren't very fast or accurate, but they can chew through many shielded vessels relatively well and do a decent amount of damage. I also tried a single powder 3 HE shell to take on larger unshielded targets. It's still pretty inaccurate, but it does a bunch of damage and it can make a mess of larger targets fairly quickly. Dealing over 500 damage in an 8 meter radius in salvos of 6 shells at a time. When that much damage is coming in every 2 seconds, things are going to get messy pretty fast. Finally, and this is by no means the only configurations you could use with this cannon, I tested a tried and true AP Sabo. With the limited block length, I couldn't really get the velocity I wanted to make it an effective squirrel killer, but it does get them eventually. On the other hand, this is an AI and ammo barrel destroyer. 
The salvo of six rounds make a small but very concentrated hole in the target, towards the squishy innards. On paper, the shell has enough damage to kill a metal beam in one hit. In practice, the slowdown caused by drag inhibits this slightly. But it's still highly effective and can disable important internal systems very quickly. This shell also turns it into a reasonably good AA gun, allowing it to shoot down many types of flyer. However, I feel that a lower gauge, dedicated AA weapon would be much more effective overall. During the course of development, I also put together a baby variant using tri-barrels. This is much smaller and would fit in a more sensible ship, while still putting out quite reasonable damage. It's basically an identical design of the other one, just a bit shorter with less gauge increasers. It ends up with a 156mm barrel and puts out roughly 50% of the DPS of its bigger brother. Because this is essentially half of the larger variant, it can take more or less the same shells, and gets a similar performance from them. Overall, I'm not sure how effective these sort of cannons are. Multiple firing pins is a very efficient strategy for increasing your DPS, and this seems to be an effective method of pulling it off. I can't guarantee that this is more effective than a turret variant of the same weapon with the firing pins all pointed in the same direction, but it definitely looks pretty cool. You might be able to do some interesting rotating towers of death using the turret stacking method I showed off in another video. I'm going to pop a blueprint of this platform with a few cannon carousels I made in the video description. You can have a play with them and see what you think. I do recommend that if you're combat testing them, you remove the turrets you won't be using, as they don't have a fail safe attached. I hope you enjoyed the video. Any likes, subs or comments are really really awesome. I love hearing from you guys and I read every single comment. I'm going to leave you with a little footage of the different ammo variants in action. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.